Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat Studio. Sorry, I'm just a couple minutes behind. I was having a couple of technical difficulties. I'm still learning how to do all this. Anyways, when you jump on, please, please, please feel free to pop in and say hello. I'm using an app called StreamYard. So um, as you join, you're gonna need to just click the accept on StreamYard so that I can see your comments and we'll go from there. So today we are doing the Super Fun Leprechaun. So for supplies, you want to make sure that you have the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, white, and black. And let me make sure I have comments enabled here. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay. I guess we're good on comments. I hope so. We shall see. All right. Anyways. Okay. Let's just get started. So also in, in addition to having your paint, you want to have three sizes of brushes. You want to have a largish one, whether it's one inch, half an inch, kind of whatever you've got that you got. Hey there, Matt. So as you guys come online, say hi. So I know you're there. I've got a small flat brush. Actually, this one is technically a, a filbert because it's slightly rounded and then a smaller round brush. Additional fun toys you can have on hand would might be a black paint pen or Sharpie, a hairdryer if you want it, um, or even a fine liner brush. I, I think I used a paint pen the other day, but we'll see what we've got and we'll just kind of work with you. Anyway, let's go ahead. Oh, and also a paper plate or styrofoam plate for holding your paint. It's going to make all of this a whole lot easier. So on this guy, we're going to start with the blue. So I'm going to grab kind of a nice bright blue. And then in addition to that, we're going to grab some white. Let's go ahead and get both of those on your palette. Hopefully you can see that blue and white. I'm going to take the larger brush and we're starting with the background. Hopefully you've already got your design pre-traced. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue. Oh, this is a stiff brush today. The blue over here, grab a chunk of white and start mixing a lighter blue. So we're really looking to get kind of a a sky color. So just mixing, mixing, mixing like so. And go ahead and get around the outside of your rainbow. Now you probably noticed on this rainbow that there's no green and blue in there. Now my daughter had some feedback, so we might come up with a few options uh, this evening. But I did not include green in the rainbow because we have a green dude standing right in the middle and I figured we didn't want to be like overkill on the green and uh, just you're drawing tons and tons of super skinny lines. So here we are. We just kind of got the first bit of, bit of blue on. i doing my best to stay in the lines, but if I boff it, well, that's okay too. Um, we're good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's acrylic paint, and if it dries, or once it dries, we can come back and fix it. I'm painting on an 8x10 canvas panel. I love these because they're small. I can move them around, and quite honestly, I can like literally just stick them right here on my on my shelf without worrying about them falling off. I think pretty much daily we've got something falling down when I'm working with larger canvases. Okay, and just get around the edge. Now, if you happen to have a stretch canvas that has a little bit of a little bit of depth to it, like like one of these, try and paint around the edges, the sides, because it really creates a nice finished look. You see how that's all finished? I really like that look, this guy down here. And of course, if you're like, oh my gosh, that painting right there I want to do, hit me up. I can get you the link for that. So offloading some of the paint, I just kind of smudged it right on my palette. I'm going to grab a little bit of the white while maintaining some of the blue that's already in that brush. And I'm going to go ahead and color in the cloud. And it doesn't have to be perfect again. This is a base coat. So we're getting kind of a blue tone, a lighter blue, bluish white tone to our cloud. Just getting good coverage. All right, pretty simple. Getting that cloud done. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Uh -huh. Oh boy. As always, my lighting. Let me turn this down a smooth, see if that'll help. Did that go the right way? I don't know. You still see me okay? Yes, good. Okay. So I was trying to like simulcast it to, to Instagram too, but well, it's just me, technology. We're, we're 
we're not we're not partners yet so now that we've gotten that kind of lighter blue color going on the cloud go ahead and just offload the, the paints from the brush and one change i'm going to make from the original so i'm thinking that it'll go the rainbow will go red orange sorry red orange yellow blue purple and so we'll have the background behind this guy purple instead of the light blue if you're like no i want to do it exactly the way you did it in the picture then you'll just skip the blue as well but i figured i would just kind of put that out there for for you so you know what to expect so since we're here in the blue and we've already got blue on our brush if you can comfortably do this on your larger brush go ahead oh matt you made some comments all right well definitely catch us later you you know you know where to find me man we will be on replay but thank you for joining Hey, Janine. I'm so glad you could join. I think you're fairly new to my page, so I'm excited to see you here. And um, if you've joined the, the Let's Paint with Blue Cat, I would love it if you guys would post pictures of your finished work on that page so we can all admire it because it's so much fun to see um, what, what great work you guys all do. And that's really, I've turned it, it was public group previously, I've turned it private so that we can all feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, ooh, what did I just do? Posting our stuff live, putting ourselves out there and it be a nice, you know, supportive environment, especially as we're, you know, becoming more and more comfortable in our painting skills. Cause I'll tell you, like when I first started painting, I made a pledge to myself that I would post my stuff on Facebook. So several years ago, every day for like, well, as long as I could handle it, which ended up being 60 days before I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> I got a day job to do. Um, but even if I thought my work was garbage, I still said, you know what, I'm going to put it out there. And it, it was a huge act of courage to be able to post my stuff. But you will be so surprised. Whatever you think, if you're like, yeah, my stuff's okay. You know, it needs a lot of work. We are our hardest critics. When you put it out there, you will be so surprised at, at how well it's received. And maybe no one says anything about it at first. And that's not really the point is to get comments. But I remember attending an event like months later, people said, oh my gosh, I loved watching you post your art. It's been so great to see, you know, your skills improve and all that stuff. And so I'm hoping that through the Let's Paint with Blue Cat, that we're providing that kind of environment where you can come and hang out and, and create art and feel comfortable experimenting and trying new things and know that it's not a judge and jump zone it's a we love you zone all right so we just got the blue in since we had the blue on the brush um so i have scratch paper it's actually a prospectus i joke about this all the time it was at one time about nutrition and biosciences from dupont but it's also really fantastic instead of throwing it away for offloading my brush and I'm figuring one day I'll have like, you know, 200 pages of gorgeous paint smudges to do something with. Because I'm an artist and I never throw anything away. Go ahead and rinse your brush. Let's just get that, um, get that blue off. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to grab a paper towel. Oh, I totally made myself laugh. Last night I was, um working on, on the smaller version of this and just kind of play in and fine tuning the design. <laughs> and, uh, I grabbed the white, you know, I keep all my stuff in this and I squirted it out and I started painting it on. And I was like, this doesn't look right. Well, it turns out I grabbed my glitter, which I mean, I don't know. Dumb blonde saw two white tubs and the wrong one. So there you go. Anyway, So let's, um, let's grab the purple and go right around Mr. Leprechaun and then we'll work our way back out. And the reason I'm saying let's grab the purple now is so that we give it a little bit of time to dry around his body. That way you don't have to, you don't have to have a, um, what you call it, a hairdryer. And since that's a little bit smaller, I'm going to downgrade my, make sure we're still on camera here. Yeah. I'm going to downgrade my, my brush to something smaller. So now I've got the the small flat brush instead of I was using a half inch guy so it's a little easier to get in in the nooks and crannies and since my brush is a little bit poofed out right now because I've been 
doing stuff. I'm kind of scrubbing into the paint and brushing it out to get the bristles to flatten a bit. And then just going to kind of come around and start at the edges here. And yeah. And I'll tell you, my purple paint, I'm using, well, actually, I don't remember what I'm using, but whatever it is, it, uh, it doesn't have the best coverage, so I will need multiple coats. Maybe you've got a better purple. Hopefully you've got a better purple. I forgot about that. I should pull out the handy dandy paint drawer and see if I've got a better purple. Now, if we were using like the ten dollars a tube paints, this might go this might, you know, go on a little bit better. But oftentimes when we're just learning to paint and just playing around. 10 bucks a tube is, is pretty daunting, and I would much rather have 10 $1 tubes than one $10 tube, because then I can really play with colors. And especially, you know, it depends on your comfort level with mixing colors. Um, not everybody is born with that sixth sense of how to mix colors. In fact, most people are not born with that sixth sense of how to mix colors. A little bit of blue in there, but that's fine. We'll, we'll suit that after. Okay. So basic filled in. We'll come back and get a second layer a little bit later. But it is nice to just get that purple, that kind of purple in there. Yep. Yeah, let's go ahead and give that guy a rinse. Give it a really good rinse. In fact, if you have a second cup of water, only if, maybe give it just a little extra rinse. Because we're going to go for the yellow. So grabbing just a basic primary yellow, I think. This one's a Deco Art Americana. And it was a scary. I actually remember like all of what I put in my tubes. Well, not all, but many. And I'm going to maintain a little bit of extra white on the side so we can get a good base coverage here. Because this stuff goes on real thin, kind of like the purple. I'm going to grab a smidge of white and a bit of that yellow, mix it together for just a, a bit more thickness. I'm going to come in and begin to lay in, whoops, oh yeah, okay, we're getting, we're getting some green whether we like it or not because my blue is still a little wet, I'm smearing. So give your, give your blue edge a little bit of, a little bit of clearance there. Now this is a slight, it's a yellow, a yellow white mix, mostly yellow. It's just, it's going to give better coverage so that the second coat goes on smoother and more intense. Just grabbing little bits of yellow and white and mixing it together. It's it's hardly noticeable, but it is this I do right now have a bit paler tone than I necessarily want as my finished color. So come up on the other side. It's still a little too pastel for me still. But that's usually the way it goes when we're doing yellow. And instead of doing red, orange, yellow, I'm doing yellow, orange, red. Um, it's a lot easier to accidentally blend yellow into orange than it is to blend, or you know, with less consequence. That's the word, with less consequence than it is to, to um, accidentally get your or some orange in your yellow. Coming around the cloud, trying to be a little bit careful. Luckily, it should be big enough. There we go. And so another thing you can do if you want, especially if you're in that Let's Paint group, is take a picture of your setup. Take some pictures partway through the process and post them on our, our page. It's so fun to see kind of your setup and what's going on. Obviously, you see my setup, right? This is my new rise and, rise and fall table. Okay, we'll come back to the yellow in a second. Now we're going to grab some orange. In fact, I'm going to take the, the yellow, I'm going to go right over that black line, right over the divider line and get a little bit into the orange zone. Because I think we can, sorry, I know, I was like, oh, we're going to do this. Then I had this revelation. You know, blending, especially if you've got a little bit of wet paint, we could get maybe get a cool effect right here at the border, even though we will come back with a, a pen and kind of line those. All right. There we go. So we get a little rainbow happening. So again, if you're just coming on and just joining us, please feel free to say hi. Uh, you will need to click on the allow stream yard button.
button or whatever, just that way so I can see your comments. But what this does is it allows me to stream to both the Facebook page as well as my Let's Paint page and also archive this on YouTube so that we can maybe do some replays later because, you know, I don't know about you, but when something's on Facebook like three days later, it's impossible to find. Okay, so starting with the orange, I'm going to come right up to that edge. Oh, yes, that is cool. So if we start on that kind of along the black line, and you can stay within the black line for now, and then you kind of slowly work your way towards the yellow, you'll notice that the wet paints, the wet yellow and the wet orange kind of blend. I don't know if you can see it necessarily, but I do have a little bit of blending going on there. And I think that's just going to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit less, less flat. And that's always fun to do. So then coming back on this side and doing the same thing, kind of getting the outer edge first, then working our way in to get, grab some of that active yellow. Well, it started to dry on this side, so it might not get quite the same effect, but it's okay. And, you know, I'm messing a little bit. I'm kind of getting into my shamrocks a bit. We will paint over that. Do your best to avoid them, but if you get some paint in your shamrocks, no biggie. Hey, Kristen. Are you, are you at Holly's house or are you, um, are you, uh, are you in your own place today? Hopefully you guys are painting together. All right, lucky leprechauns, lucky leprechauns. Oh, I just want to get into that paint and start blending. Girl, take a check though. So what we'll do is we'll grab some of that orange and now come around the outside, going right over that orange line. What that also does is it helps get some coverage going on the black line. Black line, that's what I meant. There. And then when we overlap, it'll leave no like white canvasy gaps, which we don't like white canvasy gaps. White canvasy gaps just look awkward. Okay. And aha, time for some red. This one, technically, oddly, is actually a black uh, magenta. This is so strange. I, I One of these days, I'm going to pull the bottles out and show you. I have, like, magenta. Is this the one? That's fire. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it. Man, it, it just cracks me up. So there's one that's called magenta. And then one that looks like red or one that looks like pink that's called phthalo red. And you're like, what, 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 why is, why is the one that's traditionally pink red and why is the one that's traditionally red pink? I do not know. I feel like the people who name these things should be fired. So another really great red for this might be like the Deco Art Americana Tuscan red. It's a very intense, beautiful coverage, cool tone red. Um, I tend to lean towards the warmer ones, but this one's, oh, look at this. It's blending beautifully with that orange, especially when you focus first on the exterior portion of the, of the rainbow and then work your way back in towards the, back in towards the orange section. So if you're loading, offloading as much of the paint as possible on the outer portion, and then just gently blend streaking kind of on the inside, it's, it's, it's still a little subtle, but I'm really liking how that's looking. Okay. And I think since this guy is, oh yeah, it's still a little wet. I can get that effect here too. So you do have to work a little bit quickly. Hi, Peyton! Yes, Peyton! I think you're you're officially, unless somebody younger comments, somebody, uh, you're our youngest painter with us today. Peyton, Peyton, you're seven, right? And you're in first grade. Are you doing... What are you doing, your rainbow leprechaun? Peyton joined me to do the lemons. It was the lemons, wasn't it? It was something we were doing that was fun the other day. I'm so glad you're here. I 
So don't forget, tell your mom to post pictures on our private group after so everybody can see how awesome you are doing your painting. It's also why I made it a private group so that it wasn't just out there to the whole rest of the world, but it was a smaller subset. So moms could more comfortably put pictures of their awesome kids doing awesome things and grown-ups doing awesome things because, you know, we are definitely painters of all ages. So Holly and uh, Kristen, I'm going to need some selfies, girls. Okay. All right. So there we have it. We've got pretty, a pretty good rainbow going. And because we, we took that color outside the edges and then drag the second color through it, we do have kind of a cool blend. Obviously we didn't do that here because that would be sort of weird. Um, let's see, anywhere else needs red? Nope, let's go ahead and actually offload it first. Just scrape it on whatever paper you've got. And the reason I say to do that before you rinse it is it just gets a whole lot less water in your rinse or a whole lot less pigment in your rinse water so that you have less risk of like getting muddy, muddy colors going on. Okay. Now then the last piece we'll do, well, we'll do the base here and then we will move into the sky and do the, the finishing. Actually first, you know, I'm all over the place. Let's get that. Let's get one more coat of purple before we do Mr. Leprechaun. My, my purple looks terrible. So I want to get that fixed now. Just dab in. I'm sorry. I know I'm all over the place here sometimes. So luckily the second coat goes on a whole lot better and cleaner and prettier. Does everybody have hair dryers ready and available? Yeah, it was lemons, wasn't it, Peyton? I tried to talk my daughter into joining us, but I think she's upstairs doing something else. I gotta work on my, my space so I can have so I can have a helper sit here next to me so we can have a couple people painting online or live. All right. So there we go. Now the purple shows a little bit better. And I am going to throw a little, little uh, hair dryer on that just to get the purple to dry real quick. So save us some. And you can just offload the, the paint from your brush a little bit too. All right, that was a pretty sort of a quick, quick blast there. Um, so in this one, we did kind of a, a navy blue color. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to mix a navy blue because I mean, how many people really have navy blue, blue paint other than paint freaks like me? So a small amount of black. Now, most of this blue here is, is all dry. So it's okay to put paint right over that. So just a small blob of black. We really don't need a lot. You see how little that dollop is right there? Like a fingernail at most. So I will grab a small amount of that, like a subset, bring it over here and just kind of wipe it. And then I'm gonna grab a big chunk of the blue and mix it into that, into that black to see if I can't get a darker, a darker color. It's kind of a muddy, Kind of a muddy, a muddy blue, but it should do. And just go ahead and kind of mix up a, a navyish blue that works for you. Your blue, this is a very green blue. It's not necessarily the best, the best one to make a navy with, but it's okay. We're just kind of looking for a relatively neutral dark color. So if you made yours like black and purple, so it was super dark purple, ahem, purple holly. You could totally do that. And if you had like a cobalt blue instead of this crazy screaming cerulean blue that I've got, you might have better luck with your navy.
coverage go in. Going under Mr. Leprechaun's feet. And I'm working fairly quickly on this one to get it covered because we're going to actually come back in with some white and add some dimension to it. So I do keep needing to mix a bit more paint, mostly the blue that I run out of as opposed to the black. Just kind of get around his feet. Now I'll remind you, if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having trouble keeping up, although Peyton, you're probably like, hurry up already, Wendy, because there's something about kids. Y'all paint so much faster than grown-ups. I can never keep up with the kids. But you grown-ups might be like, Wendy, you're going too fast. So I will tell you, I will promise this will be long, this will be available for replay. And um, if I go too slow, you re really just want to kill me. Or if you go back and watch the replay and I'm going really slow, about two minutes in, you'll just be like, oh. So there's a little bit of method to the madness. Okay, so with your brush covered in this kind of strange, maybe bluish, muddy mix, just going to grab a little bit of the white and I'm so I had already kind of got some white and blue mixed together. I'm just going to grab it from there and going to pull some of that white kind of across the border where the rainbow is. Hopefully you guys can see that a little bit here. And then just kind of drag from the edges and allow the blending to occur on canvas. And so we're lightening around the edges and allowing kind of it, the, the navy to be the darkest around where the leprechaun is standing, the lepronome. That just sounds like a leper and a gnome. That doesn't really work, does it? Not so much. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying. And here we go. And so again, if you're just joining us, please feel free to say hi. Let us know you're there. It's always fun to talk to everybody who's online with us. Okay. All right. And so I kind of left a dark section around his feet. Hopefully you can see that. And I allow the lightness to occur kind of around and it's a little streaky and you know, maybe we'll add just a smidge more. Well, that didn't really work, did it? Come on, let's see if we can get you to see that. Just smidge more highlight along the, the border there. And again, you can mess with that. Oh, oh pff, duh. Doing it right off camera like a dum dum. But yeah, just kind of right along here. Keep it loose, keep it free, keep it fun. Doesn't really matter exactly and offload the paint and go ahead and rinse. How do I get so much paint on my hands and stuff? Just start it. And let's go ahead and do his beard since we're here and we've got a little bit of black and we've got some white. So same square brush. Now if you're working in a smaller scale than you know, the, the traceable or something, you know, little, you may need to use a smaller brush than me. If you're working in a much larger scale, a larger brush might potentially work. I love these kind of quarter inch size, size quarter inch size flat brushes. I find them very helpful. So we're going to grab just a corner, just dip the little tiny corner into that black and pull it out here into the middle. And then we're going to grab some of that white from over there and mix. And we're mixing a gray and wow. Even that tiny corner of black made it fairly dark gray. And we're going to use that gray on his beard. So we'll kind of outline around the shamrock. And if you feel like, oh, my gray is a little bit dark, you know, lighten it up. But remember that this is the first coat and we will come back and make some changes to, to give the, the gray beard a little bit more dimension. So just get that beard filled in. So the beard is really that part all under the brim of the hat, the nose, and around the shamrock. And that's pretty much all the bottom, all where the beard is. And the darker gray makes a really great base. And if you have just touch of blue in there by accident, that's okay too. Um, it'll look great.
I know mine's got little bits of blue in it. So does this one, so we're good. So now we have a nice gray. Oh, there, gray beard. Go ahead and offload that paint. And we will, thinking we want to do some, I think it's, okay, we'll do his pants. And then we'll start to do some of the green and then we'll do hands, head, nose, all the stuff. Just trying to be strategic about the colors that we use in, in certain amounts of time. So his pants on this one, you know, they look almost khaki. Well, I didn't tell you to bring khaki or tan or anything, did I? So how do you think we're going to, we're going to make that color? Any guesses? Type in your guesses. What color do you think? Or what color combinations do you think we use to get that? funky khaki color. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow. A little bit of purple. And a little bit of white. That sounds like a gross color combo, doesn't it? It is, but it makes the perfect khaki color. Taking that yellow and we'll, and you know what, we'll just mesh it right into where we had that, where we were making our gray. A little bit of purple, not too much, just a pinch. A little bit more purple, a little bit more yellow, a little bit of white, and mix it. And that's, if you've created kind of an ugly, muddy, grayish, tannish color, congratulations, you just paint, you just mixed pants color. And go ahead and paint that in there. So we're going around his shoes. We're basically going to get, you know, under the shamrock, around the shoes, just this little zone here. It's almost like his, his legs are almost like an upside down heart. Now, if you have just like plain brown, you can use that. You could add a little bit of white to it to, to tone it down a bit. Um, but sometimes mixing colors can be a bit fun. So since I'm not feeling super accurate today, I just went right over the shamrock stem. I can still see my lines because after I traced mine on, I just went over it with um, permanent marker so that I'd really be able to see my lines and also so that you would be able to see my lines. All right, so that's pretty good right there. Um, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more purple, just a pinch. Like I'm literally just kind of taking the very, very tip and putting it, putting it in and I'm mixing it here. So it's hard to tell, but that tan color got a little bit purpler. I think I'll add just a smidge more, just a touch. And maybe we'll grab a smidge of black too. I, I want it darker. More purple, let's see. All right, so what we're doing is we're creating kind of a shading color. So it should seem darker. Uh, this is a little bit of the advanced stuff, but it, I promise it makes sense. So we're going to take that kind of purpley, darker color and just go right under the shamrock and kind of right along the sides here where his little, little tail coat comes. And then a little bit like right between his legs, it's like the inside of his legs and where his zipper is. Is that the right way to say it? Keeping it G. I probably did that off camera. I apologize. I'm sitting here just holding it, doing the thing. Now, I'm actually going to take a risk and go even, even more purple in there. So purple is an amazing tone to use in shadows, especially with skin color. And since this, while this isn't skin, it is a khaki color. Purple kind of makes a little bit better shadow than, um, uh, than black does. Otherwise, in some things, we'll use black. But So we're trying to keep it subtle, and we're really working with wet paint. Just kind of dabbing it in a little bit again under his legs. And I'm hoping that as we break this down and talk about each step, this allows you, I hope you have a few, oh, aha moments. That's really my goal here. Is to, to, is to provide you with some aha moments where something that looked really hard suddenly makes sense. And you're like, no way, that's how you do that? That's not hard. 
No, everything we do here is little tricks. It's, I'd love to even call it skill, but it's understanding how to construct the thing. And so by deconstructing it and breaking it down for you slowly, I'm hoping that it's allowing you to then go, ooh, I'm going to use that same trick somewhere else. And hopefully it will inform how you create art and it allow you to take your own art to the next level. Okay. Now that we have his tan pants, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out some green. Now this is kind of the screamingest festive green I could find. We may tone it down a little bit later and tweak it up, but we're going to start with the basic green. And I'm thinking we will hit the shamrocks. Actually, pretty much a lot of this stuff. So some things that I want you to not paint. These are his hands. Leave them white for now. This is his nose. Leave that white for now. This section right here, the belt or the rim or band, the band, <laughs> that's what it's called. Don't paint that. So we'll do all these parts, green, so shoes, shamrock. So skip the nose, hands, and brim of his hat. Ready, set, go. Well, it's not a race. But I figure if I just kind of let you know, then you've got a bit of wiggle room to go play and have some fun. All right, so apparently I'm starting with his shoes. Mm -hmm. Which actually makes a ton of sense because I'm painting this from the side and I am right handed and the shoes are at my very most left. And so that allows me to work this way. Although I really just want to paint those shamrocks. So I think I'm going to cheat and turn it over after I've done his shoes. Because I want to paint shamrocks. I'm not wearing green today. I was, I was, I swear. I had a, I had a green bandana. Let's put this on really quick so nobody can pinch me. Okay. I'm good, right? Now you can't pinch me. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Just make sure the paint fell out of the way. Just go ahead and just basic green all the things. And if you want, you can take that green right up to the edge or even slightly over the line for your shamrocks. And if you didn't have them traced on, you can totally freehand them. How do you draw a shamrock? Well, let's see, it's a heart. And then it's another heart. And then it's that third heart right there. So if you can have three hearts that their points meet in the middle and then a little stick that comes out, guess what? You can draw a shamrock. Now, the traditional Irish luck symbol is three leaf clovers. Us Americans did something weird and went with four leaf clovers. So since it is St. Patrick's and it's an Irish thing, I stuck with the three leaf guys. Okay, so here's a question. How many of you, like when you're randomly walking around, like on a walk or in a park or near some grass, how many of you actually like just randomly find four leaf clovers? Anybody? Anybody else a four leaf clover magnet? go. So yeah, I have this, I have a proclivity for, for four leaf clovers. I'll just like spot one out of the corner of my eye while I'm minding my own business. And I'll be like, wait, I, I saw four leaf clover. I'll have to kneel down and plow through and be like, there it is. But one day I actually found a four leaf and a five leaf clover. Granted, I was on a military base though. It's a little suspect, but you know. Oh, don't forget the stem. So just get those guys green. And again, if at any time you're having one of those days and, you know, life is kind of grabbing you, you've got to get to dinner, you've got this, that, and the other thing. Um, I promise this thing will, as soon as the, the live ends, I will publish it so that it's still on 
the pages so that you can rewatch it and catch up. It's always more fun to do it live because then we get to talk. But I also understand if you find yourself needing to just zip off for a little while, by all means do it. I got you covered. We will have this recording available after. Okay, so we got a couple of uh, green things. I'm add a second coat to those shoes. It's looking a little light there. Okay, now we can focus on the main body. So I think just to keep it simple, we'll do the, the outsides of his coat right along here, his little tail coat. And we will be adding quite a bit of shading to this to just help it have that more dimensional look. And also to differentiate. Dayton, you know what differentiate means, right? It means to make it seem different. The green shamrock from all the rest of the green. Because here you have kind of the shamrock and the jacket coming right up against each other. So we'll add some shading in places so that they don't seem exactly the same. In fact, we could even mix some variations on that green if you wanted to. So you can still see that happening here. So I'm just kind of working my way from his feet up to his head. Now, if you're going the other direction, that's fine. Obviously, I'm painting upside down so that it doesn't seem upside down to you. Do I have a thing? Thing somewhere. I have an easel. Where is that sucker? That would make up. Oh, give me one second. I think that'll make your life so much easier. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I used to use it a lot. Here we go. Does that make it easier to see? I think it does. Oh, let me just do it. Don't break anything, Wendy. Don't break anything. Moving some water so I don't spill. All right. Oh, I like that much better. I think that'll make your life easier too. Okay. Is that better, guys? So I'll just keep going. Get that guy all green. And again, I'm using the small round brush now. I'm finding it just allows me to really get get in all the places. Certain parts might take a little longer to do but it's gonna give me the accuracy and the cleaner lines along the edges. If I was using a much larger brush, which I tried last night, it, it, it doesn't go well. Okay. And as you come around the top here, you can give it a little bit of a swoosh so it has a little bit of curve, like a, a soft heart look. And keep going. How are we doing, guys? Get in his arms. Try to rotate this guy. There we are. It's a little easier to get to. So it's upside down. That's getting me a little, it's a little bit easier to get to. So again, make sure you don't get those hands. Just getting that green done in. And we'll have kind of some fun with the brim of his hat, like so. And one of the strategies for, for keeping your lines cleaner is, you know, do the outside first, focus on, focus on those edges, putting all your energy in, and then you can more quickly fill in the middle of the, after you've gotten your, your edge lines nice. It kind of creates a fatter border with, within which to, to mess around and not have to be, not have to pay as much attention, which I like. 
I actually used up all my little block of green. So we'll add another block of green. And so this is one of those fun paintings where you can literally just color in the lines and go with basic flat colors and it will be super cute. Um, but really what I think personally, what makes this painting extra interesting is all the kind of finishing touches that we add towards the end. So if you've got the energy, stay with us because this thing will definitely, will definitely evolve into something cool. Did I just get, oh, I got 10,000 steps today. That never happens. I spend all my time on my butt thinking about painting. I don't know what I did different today. Oh, I know I had a bunch of conversations at work headset on so it's like oh, 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 pacing the house all right so oh good so Peyton you can see that better I think that's still Peyton is that Facebook user could be somebody else huh so Peyton you may need to um, click on just like a little button that says something or other about StreamYard or that or give the app permission what it does is it just lets me see your name so I know it's you instead of uh and not somebody else so i know when i watch people who are using the app Streamyard, i also have to click on that and it's no big deal so obviously be your mom's name right okay And I'm pretty sure the comments won't actually show um, on YouTube or any other things. Um, it's really just, you know, me, me interacting with you. So everybody who watches the replay will be like, is she crazy? She's like talking to some random person whose comments aren't showing up. Mm-hmm, pretty much. Okay. All right, so we've got a good, a good, a good base of green. I come in and add a little bit more to the shamrocks. I think around the edges, some of the red is showing through. Some of my black outlining is showing through. So I'm just kind of tuning it a little bit. Luke. And again, just don't forget we are our trust in the process here. It's the layering and adding of colors, allowing different layers to dry so we can come back in and add some more that really makes such a difference in these paintings. All right. I'm loving this green. This is always a favorite green. I use it for darn near everything, except the lemons, of course. I didn't use it with the lemons. Oogie doggie. We are going to grab some black um, and go ahead and squeeze a little bit on. Oh, I still have some black, so I'm going to make use of that first. So as we always do when we mix, we try to pull the color away from the prior one. Now all this prior mix is all dry, so I'm just going to mix right on top of it so I don't run out of real estate. I'm going to grab a chunk of black and mix it together and make a dark, dark green. Maybe grab a little bit more of that green. Can you see that? It's a, it's a dark green. It's a little bit muddy. It's not the prettiest, but that's fine. It's exactly what we need. And we are going to take that. We'll turn this guy right side up. And we will, so watch your wrists. Don't get in that stuff. I'm gonna paint kind of right along the base of Mr. Leprechaun's hat, kind of a partial, kind of right around his nose, right underneath here as it kind of curves around his head. What we're doing is we're adding that nice shadow. In fact, this one, I'm going to take that darker green out a bit more towards the edge and then blend in so that we have a clean line kind of where his nose is. And then maybe a little bit more out under here, kind of coming towards the edge. There. And now you see 
his hat is starting to have some dimension. And we'll keep going with that. We'll add some of that dark green to the edge right in here. Just kind of like you can even dab along the side. And then right here where it kind of folds. So this section here is the top of his hat, but it's kind of like it's like been sat on a few times and crunched and all those things. Um, so we'll take the dark green kind of along this area, a little bit kind of around. Oh, hi, kitty. His buckle. You coming to say hi, buddy? And then allowing some of those tones to blend a bit. And then maybe a little bit of the darkness right here along the top. And take that same green and we'll do a little bit under the shamrock and kind of along the sides of his coat. And my paint's still pretty wet, so that's great. It'll just kind of blend. Do a little bit on this side, under the shamrock and under his arms. And that'll help with the differentiation a bit. Again, keeping so that our shamrock will pop a little bit more, so it's not just a big green blob. And then we'll take some more of that dark green and kind of do it right at the base of his shoe. And kind of create like a little, just like a little like lump or sideways D and fill it in. Can you see how we did that? Kind of filled it in here and filled it in here. We've got the dark right along the sides here, a lot dark a little bit along here and here. So we can also do similar for the shamrock by adding a couple of little bits, almost like a V in the middle. Oops, there you go. And then if that's too stark for you, you can grab some of the fresher green and kind of blend a little bit so that it blends, blends out some. That way it's not so, not such a strong differentiation. Okay, then we'll do a little bit in each of these. It's almost like just painting the, the tip or the point of the, of the heart. You can grab some of that lighter green, just the pure plain green, and kind of use it to blend a little. And then a little bit more dark green in this corner here, and this one here, here. A little light, a little of the plain green, just blend it a little. Whoops, oh, too much blend in there. Okay, that's kind of coming, coming together. Yeah, and we'll get a little bit of the dark actually in the middle of this guy too. I'm gonna grab some some of the lighter green and then the darker, just kind of get my brush a little wetter, and do that one. Yeah, it's on camera. Okay, good. And do all the points. Oh, that piece came a little bit darker, didn't it? Just grab some more of the light green to kind of soften that a little. Notice it's just little kind of little dabby strokes. Nothing, nothing major here. Just add some kind of dimension to each of those shamrocks. So here, you know, this is still pretty, pretty harsh. I feel like it really needs a second coat. I'm going to offload some of the paint from my brush just so that I can start fresh applying only the color I want. Um, and we'll start with more of that fresher green kind of right along in the middle here. And right along the top of his hat. We're going to focus just on the hat for a couple minutes here. Getting that green the way we like it, nice and nice and intense. And we will continue to add some highlights too. And now with a brush, which is still a little wet from the regular green, 
going to grab some of the darker color and kind of go over the dark section and allow it to kind of blend a little bit better into the lighter green. And notice how that creates a much subtler, softer line. We kind of like that. And over here, I had a couple spots that just looked patchy. So sometimes just the second coat can really help with that patchiness. And since we want to add a little bit of dimension here, grabbing a little bit of that darker color, and kind of in some of these areas where it's almost like lumpy and bent, just add some kind of darker green lines to kind of help show the creases in the hat. There we go. Look at that. That's cute, isn't it? And we'll do the hat brim a little bit, coming in with some of the darker tones again around the base of his head, near his beard and his nose. And from here, I'm going to grab again some of that, just the straight plain green. There we go. It is a leprechaun, isn't it? It's a leprechaun gnome. And we'll grab that green right here and blend. And I'm using the wet paint and the two different colors to kind of allow them to mix together nicely. And we'll keep bringing that lighter green around the side. There. And so now, just kind of like any time when you're wearing a hat, um, you know, it, let's see. So if I've got a hat and I have something here, do you notice how when I put my hand here, a slight shadow forms? And like there's a shadow under my under my hand as well. That's basically the effect that we are trying to put right right in here. And I think we have pretty much nailed it. So I'm happy. All right, now we'll just tune the sleeves a little bit. So we'll put some dark. I'll look at my reference, what I do. Okay. We'll put a little bit of the darker colors around the, the, his beard area, like so, just kind of on either side. And then I'm going to come back in with some of the, just the plain green that we just used to blend it a little bit. Okay. And I think I want slightly better blending right through here. But see, laying down those base coats is great. And then we'll tune the shoe. And then we're going to say nope. And then we'll do this one here. So there we go. Okay. So I just used basically the lighter green and I did more on the shoes so that it's still darker kind of towards the tip of the shoe and lighter at the top but it's a little, it's, it's a little bit subtler. It's a, not quite as, as strong as we had it before. Oh, oh, hey, we should be over here, huh? Okay. So let's do the next bit and I'm gonna place this guy down. We're gonna mix a lighter green. So since I've got this green here, I'm literally just gonna grab some white from over and mix a little corner over on the side. So I still have my main green, but I've mixed some lighter green over here. You can see that, right? It's a pretty good difference. Okay. And so we will take that lighter green right along the rim of his hat right here to kind of catch some highlights, little bits. Grab some more. And then right here, we'll add a little bit of highlight on this, sorry, the side of his hat kind of right above that band, a little bit here. Oop, what? Oh, it's my shirt cross. Like, what is that? A little bit here, here. You notice how that's now making his hat look really fun and lumpy? And then we'll add a little bit right here, kind of right at the, where you can see the top of his hat. And now, since we're also 
thinking about his sleeves, maybe getting a little bit along the cuff. So they're kind of sticking out. A little bit along the tops of his shoes. All right, what else do we need to do? Oh, and why don't we do some on our shamrock? Need to mix a smidge more. Just do little bits of that lighter green kind of in the divot of the heart. Just a quick little move there. Up oh, there. Isn't that crazy how like that those little little details can really make all the difference? And then we'll put a little highlight here, a little bit here on his shoulders sides of his jacket. So again, I just did here, here, and here, and then here, a little bit extra there, and here. So that really kind of pops all those details a lot. Can you believe you just did that? Okay. Oh, does Sydney say it was coming out good, Lisa? Yes, I can see the name. Thank you. Or Peyton, whoever I'm talking to. I can. Thank you. All right. Rinsing the brush. Let's keep going with the buckle and the hands and the nose. So this is going to be up to you as to how you want to do your colors. Um, and there's a whole range of skin tones we can mix. So one of the best ways to get, you know, like, so I, oh, I need, so oranges, purples, reds, and whites are really great. So you can make darker skin tones by doing orange and purple and white. Um, you can do the lighter skin tones, a little bit more Irish tones, generally with a little bit of red, a lot of white and a pinch of orange to warm it up. So I'm grabbing really almost just the tippiest tip of paint and mixing it all together. Oh, that's too dark. So I'll just grab a big chunk of white and keep oof, a lot of white. And so that's a very pink color. If you are going for a different ethnicity um, leprechaun, a little bit of purple will We'll add a lot of depth to that. I need more white. Okay. So I got kind of that tone for a, a paler color skin. Um, yeah, you can see that kind of, kind of was very bright, but now if I wanted, well, let me, let me add this to my guy and then I can show you how to tone it down a little. So let's go ahead and take that whatever color you've just mixed. I did a pink, I did red, white, and um, a little bit of orange. It's really mostly white with a touch of red and a touch of orange. And that just gives it kind of a warm tone. So this would be the Irish guy who gets sunburned when the clouds clear for a half a second. And in a minute, I will mix a different tone as well. Just to sort of show you how that, how that would work. It's kind of like the khaki pants. Add a little purple and it's amazing what, what you can mix. Okay, so I just did his hands and his nose. Now, if I didn't want quite so pink a tone, I could take a little bit more orange, a little bit of purple, and mix it darker. I maybe got too much orange. But as much as that's sort of a, a weird, I can tell that, it actually also works pretty well for a skin tone. And you can tweak that. You could probably add some yellow to, to also modify it but um yeah options making sure you know you got them okay 
let's do the buckle and then we will keep going with some of the rest of the details. So I personally just want them to have an orange, an orange brim. An orange brim, a little orange square in here. I need more paint. When in doubt, squeeze out as little paint as you possibly need. I went completely overboard on the red, and I have a huge hunk of it still sitting there waiting. But everything else, I think I've done a fairly good job of just sort of. Oh, here we go. Fairly decent job. Of conserving paint it's so easy to just use up so much paint or not use it up but throw it away after after putting too much on a plate or paint palette and that's fine it's one of those things you learn over time all right so we got a nice orange brim Ta -da. go ahead and rinse your brush and then here's where I'm going to use yellow, but if you happen to have a fancy gold, you could do gold for the, for the, um, the buckle. I'll squeeze out just a little dollop. And we will fill it in here. In fact, if you didn't want it to look quite so yellow, you could add a little bit of our friend purple, right? You mix kind of a, a brownish tone, a little bit of white maybe. Yeah. So you could add a touch of, to the, well, you can't really see it. Let me see if I can get some better in here. A little touch of purple, just kind of. Mix it right on the palette or right on the right on the um, the canvas. The very tiniest bit of purple in there. I realize it's a bit hard to see, but it makes it it keeps it a little less like crazy yellow. And then when we add some highlights to it, it'll make it look a little bit shinier, a little more like metal. All right, where are we at here? Okay, I'm gonna wipe the paint, rinse my brush. Now, as I look at mine, I don't know if you're feeling the same. I feel like my stripes are are a little bit light, and I think, you know, I want to pump up my red a smidge. So just come back in, and if you need to, now that we've gotten the majority of the details in, you can add, a, add that second coat or whatever, that next sort of deeper coat of red to really pop it. I feel like that's made a big difference in mine. Just that red needed that big time. I don't know if yours did too, but mine did. Okay. And go ahead and rinse. And we'll go back to our smaller brush. And if you've got some pure white, get some pure white out. Uh, if you don't, well, yeah, let's get some pure white out. I'm going to give this guy a quick dry just so I don't make a big mess on everything. Okay. Now you notice that's just like a really quick kind of dash of hair dryer. It doesn't need a ton. I have it on full heat um, and it just kind of speeds the paint along. So grabbing some white, we're going to add a lot of, a lot of detail here. So you could do some fun. Can you see that without it being completely hot? Not so much. Oh, at that angle. All right. I'll do a couple swooshes. So I'm going to make almost like C shapes kind of on the clouds to make it look puffier. Let's see if you can see that. Or too hot, too light, too bright. There you go. You can kind of see it now. 
just add a couple of sort of those white scoops on your cloud to make it look lumpy and bumpy. Next up, you should be able to see a little bit better. We are going to add a full highlight on his shoe, just right at the top. Another one on this side. I know we've done a lot of layers there, but it really does make a difference. And now his shoes just look like they're these shiny green things. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight on the tops of his hands, like the top finger and maybe the second finger. Ooh, I got a pink chunk in there. And then we'll add a little highlight on the top of his nose. Now that little highlight on his nose, can you see that? It's not exactly against the line. There's still a little bit of that skin tone above the white line as well. And that becomes kind of the reflection. And we'll add some fun white lines on our shamrock, maybe on the stem to kind of help pop it here. Oop. And his beard definitely needs some help, doesn't it? Let's do some Let's do some beard lines. So I'm using a fairly fine brush. I mean, it's it's just the round brush I've been using. If yours is too thick for this, you can always go down a size. I'm doing just kind of swirly lines to give him that glowing white beard. Oh, there you go. You can see it. There. A little bit here. A little bit here. Bloop. I don't know. Have fun with it. Make his beard your own. You could do swirlies if you wanted. And then we'll do one more kind of highlight near the rim of the hat. Trying to make sure we can still see some of that green. But catching a little extra highlight. A couple of little highlights along the edges here. Just a little. Can use those same same little things we did here on the, the shamrock, just kind of around certain edges, just kind of oops, keep it whimsical. A little bit here, here. Oh, need to hold need more paint. Now I'm also seeing this happens a lot, and it may happen to you as well. My brush is getting kind of frayed and funky. So I will just take it and kind of spin it a bit. Actually, maybe wipe some of the paint off and then spin it in the paint to get the bristles to come together and form a better point. Now I feel like I'll have more con oops, more control over where, where that paint goes. So here we'll do little lines. Again, little bits. Oh yeah, that made a big difference. Well, highlights on the stem. So it's just on one side. So you can still see the green kind of showing through. And sometimes it's on the sides of the leaves. Sometimes it's at the tops of the leaves. Sometimes it's right at the base where, where all the leaves meet. Yeah. Dots in the beard, not too many, but a few would be fun. And maybe a little bit of squiggle at the bottom of the cloud. Whoop, here we go. Just kind of fun. So that is the majority of the detail. We could also add a slight highlight kind of right at his knees if we wanted. Kind of just like a, like a little scrub there. I don't know. If you don't like that, you don't have to add it. It's a little bit odd. Okay. Last bit of white here. We're going to make this rainbow kind of have some motion. And we'll do that by adding a couple of white lines that sort of go up and around, almost like a shine. Want them to be slightly broken lines that kind of work their way around. Do one in the white. Some of them will be longer, some of them will be shorter, but you're really trying to kind of work along 
the shape. The white ones are harder to see on the yellow. But work along the shape of the rainbow. And I don't know why that works so well, but it's just kind of a fun effect. And so make sure that they're not all aligned with each other and you're not necessarily making a pattern. Little bits here, here. And maybe I'm doing too many this time, did fewer last time. It's going to be up to you. Those lines just kind of add a little, little fun. Okay. Now you have two options from here. If you have, do I have one to show off? If you have a black paint pen, um, this is going to go a whole lot faster for you. If you don't have a black paint pen, uh, you might be a lot, you, you, you're just going to have to go over this with a fine pen or a fine, excuse me, a fine line brush. And if you're like, oh, I need a break, that is a okay. You can also use a Sharpie, right? So this is a fine line Sharpie. I would recommend a slightly wider one. Where is it? I had one just a second ago. Uh, all my stuff. Okay. All right. Well, this one's red, but same idea. Like this type of, this type of uh, tip is perfect. Just black. If you're going, oh, here it is. It fell down. Black. If you're going to use a paint pen, make sure that your paint is completely dry. If your paint is not dry, you will ruin your paint pen. And you can get paint pens fairly inexpensively, you know, from Michaels or whatever. You can also get expensive ones. I'm going to give it a quick dry just so that it's easier to work with. Got one good highlight spot. Let's do that before we go too far. The 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 band here. I know I'm like switching gears on you, but we're gonna take that white and just a little bit of white on the buckle. I literally just added kind of a little line, so you can see the other paint through it, but it adds a sheen to that, which makes it seem a little more metallic. And then maybe I could do a little white here. A little bit here on the band and right in the center. Just kind of gives it that slightly shiny satiny look. And also by putting the highlights there and there and kind of on either side, a little bit dabbing here, it also makes it look as if it's been indented by the buckle. So it gives it that kind of cool, cool undulating dimension for lack of a better term. Okay, let's grab some black. I'm going to switch to a finer line, a finer line brush. Where'd it go? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here's one. So this guy is, it's pretty small. I should have put him in my mouth and kind of suck on the, suck on it to get it to go even smaller Then we've got pretty good fine point there. Get a big squeeze of black. And here's what we're going to do, just so that you're kind of keyed in. We're going to add all the finishing details. So if you want to add black swirls to the beard, you can. But you notice we kind of outline the shamrock, the feet, the legs, the whole body, all the details. And then we did the rainbow and everything else. And we even added a couple of poofs in the cloud. So in fact, instead of doing this with a brush, cause you'll be all here all day waiting on me and probably like, girl, hurry it up. I'm going to use the paint pen. So you can absolutely do anything I do here with a brush. We'll do a pen. And again, break out your Sharpie if you want to. So with a paint pen, you want to make sure that you've kind of got the paint going, scribble a little bit to make sure it's coming through. If your paint pen is brand new, the tip tends to be white. You've got to just, you got to prime it and let it get doing its thing. So for something like this, begin and just do kind of a quick line across. And one of the beauties of this is you don't have to be perfect with your lines. If you're sometimes slightly off, 
it still looks pretty cool. So I'm kind of making a little long rectangle for the soles of the shoes. A little something here for his legs. I want a good definition for his pants. I'm going to go outline on the shamrock. And that's where if things got a little bit messy or unruly, these paint pens can really kind of bring it all right back. So maybe a couple of little V's in the middle there. Let's get a good clean outline on his fingers. Whenever possible, when working with a paint pen, you want to do a pulling motion versus a pushing motion. If you're pulling, um, or if you're pushing, if you're pulling, it's very smooth and it kind of goes fairly freely. If you're pushing, oftentimes, you know, your paint pen will find a way to kind of spit and make a mess. All right, so just getting kind of lines around that beard. Paint pens are like one of my most favorite tricks. Though many of the paintings I do, I actually use a fine liner. But this is prime time during when you might want to be eating your dinner. So I'm going to get this done quickly so you can kind of see where we're going with it. And since I'm also down here, I'm going to keep kind of filling in parts of that rainbow, get some definition between the colored stripes. Yeah, paint pens are a favorite here. All right, we'll get the band inside, outside. And so while we're here, we can almost kind of do a scraggly line on the hat. And here's where, again, where if some of your definition is lost a little bit, you can really kind of reclaim a lot of it with your, with your paint pen kind of pulls that hat together a bit more. And if I wanted, I could even add a few extra dark kind of lines in some of these creases here to make that more believable. Oh, look at that. He's done. Well, the rest of this is a lot easier. You just do the bows of the rainbow. So again, you see, I'm not doing this in a complete, you know, single line. I pause and reposition so that I can maintain a pulling motion whenever possible. Boop. Makes such a scratchy, scratchy sound on the canvas, too. It's kind of weird. But also kind of cool. I had a couple spots where the painting just goes right off the sides, so I don't have to outline on the sides. All right, let's get a quick outline on these guys. little V in there too just for fun. It's coming out cute. Do this guy sideways. Pew, pew, pew. Little V's. And the last one. In the cloud and then oh my goodness from there we have earned the honor of signing our names on this super cool fun painting and calling it a win got the outline on that guy and so just to kind of 
actually we'll take some of these pieces and make them a little bit more round and poofy. You see how I extended those lines kind of into the cloud to make it poofy? And then maybe we'll do a double kind of right here and maybe a single right here. And if we feel like at a dot and I'm going to say that guy is pretty well done. Oh, we could do some swirlies in his beard. I totally forgot. And if you don't want to do swirlies in his beard, that's okay. And this is extra fun when you have the swirlies because you've also got the little bits of white going on under there. And so it just adds, it adds a couple extra layers of interest. And then maybe a couple of dots over by his nose just to kind of almost look whiskery. And there you have it. Sign your name. I'm going to do mine. Blue Cat Studio. And of course we need a heart because we need a heart. And there it is. Didn't that come out fun? I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I certainly loved having you here painting with me. Two different beards on the leprechaun. Yeah, it does a little bit, doesn't it? Oh, don't forget to post your pictures on the site. And I look forward to painting with you again. Thank you so much for joining me. And we will see you next time. Have a good night, you guys. Bye.